দয়াময় আমাদের স্বর্গস্থ পিতা মহান সৃষ্টিকর্তা এই সময় তোমার মহানবীর গুরু ধন্যবাদ দে প্রভু যে তুমি আমাদের সেই সকাল থেকে এই যাবত পর্যন্ত সুন্দর রেখেছ সুস্থ রেখেছ আমাদের যা কিছু প্রয়োজন তা তুমি যুগিয়ে দিয়েছ এবং প্রচুর আশীর্বাদ করেছ প্রভু এই সময় প্রভু আমরা তোমার সেই মহানবীর গুরুকে ধন্যবাদ দিই প্রভু যে তুমি আমাদের একটি সুন্দর সুযোগ করে দিয়েছ এই বাইবেল স্টাডির মাধ্যমে যেন তোমার বাক্য নিয়ে আমরা ধ্যান করতে পারি এবং তোমাকে আমরা যেন আবার গভীর ভাবে জানতে পারি প্রভু আমরা যতজন এই স্টাডিতে অংশগ্রহণ করছি যারা করতে পারিনি প্রত্যেকে তুমি আশীর্বাদ করো আমরা যেন সুন্দরভাবে আমাদের সেই তোমার বাক্য নিয়ে আমরা আলোচনা করতে পারি এবং যিনি এই বাক্য পরিবেশন করবেন তাকে তুমি আশীর্বাদ করো আমরা যারা শ্রোতা রয়েছি আমরা যারা অংশগ্রহণ করছি প্রত্যেককে তুমি আশীর্বাদ করো প্রথম থেকে শেষ পর্যন্ত আমাদের প্রত্যেককে তুমি জ্ঞান বুদ্ধির দুয়ার খুলে দাও আমরা যেন সেটা সুন্দর হয়ে বুঝতে পারি এই ধন্যবাদ প্রার্থনা যে তোমার নামে চাই আমেন let me be singing when the evening comes bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i'll worship you holy name your way chim love and you slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing 10000 reasons for my heart to find bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i'll worship your holy name and on that day when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will praise an ending 10000 years and then forever more bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship your holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul 
I'll worship you holy. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yes, brother. Yeah. Is it possible? Can we sing one more song? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. Let us worship. Yes. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. Let us worship our Lord. He's a very, very good of very good friend. So, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there troubles anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh. Lord, sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come with the Lord of care. Precious Savior, still our refuse. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise for Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his homes he will take and seal thee. So, Will find a soul is there. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for His mercy. We thank God for His faithfulness. We thank God for everything, for whatever that He has allowed in our lives. We praise God and uh, we see what God, God has placed for us today. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. As we come to your gracious throne, my Lord, speak to each one of us. Father, reveal thy ways to us, Father. As you are speaking, my Lord, help us to understand your ways. Open our ears and heart to understand your ways. Lord, lead us and guide us. Holy Spirit, God, we surrender this time into your mighty hand. Help us in it. All the glory and honor we commit to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. As we see, we've been meditating on the book of Revelation. And by the grace of God, we could able to cover the first two chapters. 
in the first two chapters, we have seen the stature of Jesus Christ, how he has introduced himself to the churches. And we also have seen the revelation that uh, Jesus wants to give it to his servants because he loves them. Because for every church, there is a message from God. And uh, God also is mentioning that the messengers or angels of the church are the lightning or shining stars. We know that the shining stars, they will shine in the darkness. And we have seen from Daniel chapter 12 verse 20, those who lead many in righteousness will shine like the stars in the heavens. And uh, that's also one kind of uh, uh, symbolically God was mentioning about it. And uh, we see in Revelation many times, many places, the number seven is being mentioned. And uh, what is the importance of this number? You can see the seven number also, uh, it tells about uh, the completion. And uh, symbolically, it's a complete or a perfect number. And we see from the uh, creation, the seventh day, God has completed his work and he rested. So that's also about the number seven. And as we have seen uh, from chapter two, we went through different churches like Church of Ephesus, Church of Smyrna, Church of Pergamos, Church of Typhia. And uh, now we are looking at uh, third church, third chapter, Church of Sardis. We have meditated that for every church, the revelation of Jesus Christ is like unique. For one church, he says like, I have a, I'm the one who is holding the seven stars in my hand. And I'm the one who is walking in the midst of seven lamps. And for another church, he says like, the one who is having a double-edged sword is going to speak to you and I will fight with, fight with you with my sword. Because the revelation of Jesus and the, uh, the situation or the status of the spiritual status of the church, you can see this kind of a link between these two. And uh, as we see the church of Smyrna, he has, uh, church of Pergamos, he has revealed himself as uh, the one who is having a double-edged sword, sharp double-edged sword. And uh, we can also see what is sharp double sword. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews, we can see that the word of God is like a sharp double sword that can penetrate through our body and spirit and reveals the thoughts. And he said that if they don't repent, I will come and I'll fight with you this word. And uh, we have meditated that in this church, what is being, what was uh, what was the deficiency? The deficiency was uh, they are good, they are good in everything, or they are good in many things. Uh, but the foundational, the foundation in the word of God was deficient. So God was revealing Himself as the word of God to them. Mm -hmm. And word also we have seen for the Church of Thyatira. The Church of Thyatira, He revealed Himself as a the one who is a consuming fire. The consuming fire also represents the purification or the holiness. And in this church, Jesus was exhorting them for their deeds. And uh, about uh, one prophetess who is filled with the spirit of and uh, who is leading many people to be astray, that to go astray in the way of the Lord. And this, the spirit was there in this church for, for some time and it produced offsprings also. Mm -hmm. So Jesus Christ said that I will come and if they don't repent and that there is a process of uh, taking them, taking a person into true repentance. And he says, like, I will, I will make her uh, make uh, sick. 
another form of bed of sickness. Yeah. Bad, on a bed of uh, bed of sickness, and uh, all the offsprings of this spirit, I will kill them. And uh, you know, for every church, along with the appreciation, along with exhortation, there is also promises being given. Jesus is promising them that those who overcome, they will receive something. For somebody, it's like a, a hidden manna. Mm -hmm. For somebody, it's a uh, crown, crown of life. For somebody, it is a, a white stone. So, but there is some reward waiting. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, even we can see from the book of Revelation and the other gospel, other epistles too. There is a reward for all the acts for that one is doing on this earth. Mm -hmm. So now we let's look at the, the church of Sardis. So uh, can somebody read uh, from verse 1 to 5 or 1 to 6 from 1 to 6 And unto the angel of church in Sardis write yes. these things said he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars I know thy works and that thou has a name that thou livest, but not art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found any works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not Know whatever I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few name even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. He that overcomes uh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment and I will not blot out his name from the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Amen. Okay. Uh, give me a minute. Is my voice audible to everybody? Yes. Is it, is it uh, clear? Is it audible enough? Yes. Permit is okay. Okay. So, we, here, for to this church, the revelation of Jesus Christ, he said that I'm the one who's having seven stars and seven spirits, and he is speaking. And one good thing here we can observe, to every church, Jesus wants to speak. There is no church that Jesus does not want to speak, because he is the author and finisher of the faith, and the uh, he says, like, he wants to speak to the church, and he says, the one who is having seven stars and seven spirits. When, when we kind of meditate about the stars, we see, uh, not all the stars have the same glory. Can we turn our books to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41? Chapter 15, verse 41. Can somebody read it? There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. The star differs from star in glory. Yeah. Here it is written in the Bible that uh, there is a different glory for every star. In fact, after so many years, even the scientists are now, uh, they are like attesting this truth. They say that in the galaxies, there are different stars, but uh, one star, it is like uh, they, it will emit a different color. And another star will emit a different color. Not all the stars emitting the same color. And here also it says like uh, there is a glory to glory and different dimensions of glory in uh, uh, for Jesus. And also as we refer to the 
uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, we see these seven stars represent seven churches or the angels of the churches. And the, from that we can understand the glory of each church is different. The glory of every single church is different. It is unique. So many times people, they often like uh, misunderstand or mis, uh, misjudge or misinterpret something uh, about uh, a particular revelation or a particular uh, uh, leading of their church. But from here we can understand that we are all part, we are all part of one single body, but at the same time, it has a different glory. In fact, the Bible says that the, the weight of the glory, there is a weight for this glory, and it is different. And uh, every single church has a different glory and a unique glory and a unique revelation of Jesus Christ. And we can also see that he says he has having the seven spirits. What, how do we understand these seven spirits? Can we turn our books to Zechariah? Zechariah, chapter 2. Zechariah, chapter 2. Um, chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 2. What you are looking at, what you are looking at, Zechariah, and he says, like, he, I saw it, seven lamps and connected to one stand. Connected to one stand. And these seven lamps are there and connected to one single stand. And we can see that these seven lamps represent seven spirits of God. Many places we can see that. And uh, uh, chapter, Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, also we can see there is a lamp stand with seven lamps. Mm -hmm. And uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, also we can see there are lamp stand with yeah, seven lamps. And we can also see chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. Can someone read chapter 4, verse 5? Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there are seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Yeah, seven spirits of God. And Revelation chapter 5, verse 6 also. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and the four living beings, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Yeah, here are many places like we can see that from the scripture there are seven spirits of God. In fact, they are not a different spirits, but they are, uh, we can understand that it's a complete seven dimensions or seven folds of uh, the spirit of God. Seven folds of the spirit of God or seven facets of spirit of God. How do we understand that? Where do we find this? What are these seven spirits? What are these seven spirits? And uh, one illustration from the Bible scholars, they say the seven spirits are also mentioned in Bible. Can we turn our books to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2? Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, it says like the seven spirits of God. There's one, the spirit of God. And we see the spirit of wisdom, 
space of understanding, space of counsel, spirit of power, spirit of knowledge, and the spirit that that uh, makes that brings the fear of the Lord. There are seven poles of the spirit uh, ministry of spirit of God. We can call it like the ministry of the spirit of God. Seven poles. Can somebody read this uh, verse? Isaiah chapter eleven, verse two. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. Oh, fear of the Lord. These are like seven folds. Like the spirit of God works in all these dimensions. Like even in Bible we see, if anybody is lack of wisdom, they can ask. When the Holy Spirit God comes, He will give us the revelation. He will give us the knowledge. He will give us the counsel. He is a good counselor. And uh, He will give us the understanding of the scripture. And uh, Acts 1 8 says that when the Holy Spirit God, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will receive power. You will receive power. You will receive the knowledge about the scripture. All this we can understand as the, the sevenfold ministry of the the spirit of God. And uh, that's what God is mentioning that. Why is he mentioning that? We let's see. He's saying that to this church, I know your works. What are they? Here, God is like, uh, keep on reiterating that. He knows everything that is happening in a particular church. Because the church is his home. Or the church is the one that he has brought by his blood. And he is never, he will be never ever unaware of the things that are happening in any church. Even how bad the church may look like, but he is aware of every single thing. So he says, like, I know. We can see for all these churches, Jesus was mentioning that I know, I know. And he, for this church also, he is saying that I know the your thing. And the one remark he said that uh, for namesake, you are alive. You are alive for namesake. Let me read that from MKJ. And he said that, I know your works, that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. They are looking alive. They are looking like a very lively church from outside, from outer appearance. Or for the at least for the the world, they're looking like a very lively church, mm -hmm. but they are dead. What does it mean by dead? Dead, dead. Uh, this represents two things. Death means absence of life. You can see Gospel of John chapter one verse four. In him there is life, and the life is the light the unto life. the men. And that means. There is an absence of the life of God. There is an absence of the presence of God. And also death represents the wages of sin is death. That means this church is almost at the verge of completely dying. This gives us a great caution to all the, to all the believers. There is a one doctrine that is uh, mentioning or that is supporting that uh, once saved, forever saved. Mm -hmm. Whatever that people do, they will not lose the salvation. This teaching, this false teaching has uh, uh, prevailed or uh, discovered many churches in the from the first uh, first church onwards, that is one of the Nicolaitan teachings. He says, like, once somebody is saved, he is saved forever. Whatever that he or he or she does with his body would not affect their salvation. Mm -hmm. Even now, many churches believe that once saved, forever saved. But here he says, like, you are dying, and he said, you are dying. 
and uh, you may die. What does it mean by die? God is not certainly refer referring to the physical death. If it is a physical death, then we would not be sending a spiritual message to that church. Because why do we call it as a spiritual message? He says at the end, those who have ears can hear. Let them hear what Spirit says. The Spirit is giving them a spiritual message. So here, there is a possibility that somebody, I, even after receiving life, can die. That is actually a real warning, danger, or exhorting message. Because why, why they are dying? He is the answer. He says that um, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain. That which remain that are ready to die for I have not found your words perfect before God. Completed in the sight of my God. Why this church is dying is that there is a deficiency of being alert, of being watchful. Jesus, even Jesus many times mentioned or exhorted his disciples and the church of be watchful, be alert. Be alert in the end days. Be alert what you are listening. Be watchful. Because if somebody is not watchful, they will not know who is sleeping in his life, in his spiritual life, or in his life, in his family, in his, in his discretion, in his boundaries. Every single person has a boundary. And who is creeping into this boundary, nobody will know. As we see even Genesis chapter 3 and uh, chapter 2, the Bible says that serpent is the crafty in among all the beasts of the earth. And we see in the Garden of Eden, there were animals, there were no beasts. And now the question arises, how this beast, which was on earth, entered into the Garden of Eden? We see Genesis chapter 2 verse 17, God has given a work to Adam to cultivate and, and to rule the earth. To cultivate and, and to protect. protect the Garden of Eden. These two words that God has given to God, uh, Adam, to cultivate, that and means to reproduce. Cultivation is like to reproduce, mm -hmm. to bring them more fruit. And the second thing is to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, how this beast that was outside the Garden of Eden entered into the Garden of Eden started speaking to Eve. There we can see a lapse in the security, mm -hmm. a breach in the security. Here, being alert, not being alert actually brought death to this church. When we are not, when anybody, any believer is not being alert, they will not know where they are going. They will not know where they are falling. They will not know what is, what or with whom they are making or they are fellowshipping with, they are associating with. Mm. What is creeping into their churches, they do not know. Can we turn our books just to Jude, Epistle of Jude? Uh, Verse 4. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed, unnoticed into this church. Those who were long beforehand uh -huh. marked out for this condemnation. And yeah. godly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentious and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Here, they, they are mentioning about the few people who just have crept. Who just have crept into the church unnoticed. Oh, Secretly, they, are, they have crept into this church. And they, these people, this group of people, they have taken grace for licentiousness, licentiousness. for the sin. 
And this is also that is happening even here. And because the church was not watchful, mm. they are dying. And this gives us a great alarming exhortation to that. If somebody is not watchful of their own salvation, somebody do not work out their own salvation, can go astray from God. And their deeds are like they are becoming dead works. And here he is saying that uh, there are some works which are about to die. So strengthen those which are about to die. There are like some things which are just about to die. Just uh, on the, can say, we can say on a ventilator or something like that. Mm -hmm. That also gives us the nature of Jesus Christ. Can we turn our books to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 3? Isaiah chapter 42, verse 3 says, is the nature of Jesus Christ. That he will not let go things. He will not let you. I mean, there was a small fire and it was just about to put off, but uh, he's not just going to wipe it off or he's not going to break this. Uh, the grooms he leaves, yeah. he will not break, and the dimly burning wick, he will not extinguish. A bruised reed, he will not break. It is a bruised reed, but he will not, he's not going to break it further. Or something like a wig, which is having a small light, is not going to put it off. It's the same thing. He's not going to uh, stop that. It's also the same thing that he's saying that they are having some small light that is about to die. Mm -hmm. He's saying that is now you strengthen. How do they strengthen that? He's saying that what is the problem? He, he says in the verse 3, how you have heard Remember it, repent, and follow it. You can see, remember therefore how you have received and heard, and hold fast and, and repent. If therefore you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at whatever I will come upon you. Yes, we can see James chapter 1, verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22 says that, do not be just be the listeners of the word, but be the doers of the word. That's been missing in this church, we can say. He says that whatever that you have heard, you have listened, act accordingly. You are neglecting that, and that brought death on, on you. That's the church of Sardis. Jesus Christ is telling them. Here also we can learn a lesson. Somebody knowing a lot about the scripture or Bible cannot guarantee him from falling in sin. The knowledge of the scripture cannot guarantee him from falling in the sin. What can guarantee him? Being obedient to that word can stop him from falling in the sin. That's what is missing. That is what the deficient in this church that uh, they are good listeners of the word. They have heard about the message. They have heard. They have heard this. And but what is missing is they are not obedient. following. They are not obedient to it. And he says, like, if you are not watchful, I will come to you like a thief, and you will not know on which hour that I will come to you. Mm -hmm. This is also very strong. Strong word from Jesus Christ. If he comes on a day, an unexpected day, like a thief, and it will be like a judgment. Mm -hmm. How can we see? In the Bible, there are two occasions God said, let's go and find out. Where did he say? Genesis chapter 11, when the men are building the Babel, God said, that, let's go and find out. Let's go and see. Let's go and see. And uh, even uh, the, in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, there also God said, that, let's go and see. And uh, when he comes to that, it's actually, it's kind of like a judgment has come upon them. That's why he says, I will come on an hour, an 
unexpected power. And because they are they're not watchful, it is like the power of peace. Mm -hmm. But for those who are watchful, it will never be like the hour of peace. His coming will not be in the hour of peace. Can we turn our books to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 4 to 8. Verse 4 to 7, or we can read 8 also. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to practice. No, no. First Thessalonians oh, chapter sorry. 5. Okay. First Thessalonians okay. chapter 5, verse 4 to 8 says, But you, brother, but ye are you? Yeah. Yes, brother, please go ahead. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep in the night, and those who are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. And then here, those who are in the darkness, those who are in the night, is saying that it will, for them, the day of the Lord will be like a day of the thief, like hour of the thief. For those who are in the light, it will not be like that, because they are watchful. They know, they know what is happening around. Even we can refer to Matthew chapter 25. Even we can refer to Matthew chapter 25. It says that uh, there are five wise women, five wise virgins, and five foolish virgins. And what is lacking in these, or what is the deficiency in these five uh, wise virgins and five foolish virgins is like that. Yeah, when when the coming of the bridegroom was delayed, they fell asleep. They fell asleep. They were sleeping. They were not watchful. And suddenly they heard the voice. And thank God they heard the voice. Some people they will not even hear the voice. That's the danger. Because they are sleeping, they could able to hear the voice. If somebody is dead, they will not be able to hear the voice. The dead will not hear the voice. They, they are dead may hear the voice for the their resurrection and for the judgment. But they heard the voice and uh, wise virgins were able to immediately set their lights and uh, go into the party or going to go and meet the bridegroom. But the foolish virgins, they were trying to set their lights, they set their lamps, but they found that oil was missing. The preparation was missing. They were not prepared enough to have this oil. So Jesus Christ was also exhorting this church that uh, be watchful. You would not know on which hour that I will come upon you. This is one of the major objectives that uh, for every Christian have this hope and have this perception to meet Jesus one day. Mm -hmm. To meet Jesus one day. Recently, as we are doing Bible study, somebody says like that, Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to meet Jesus Christ in the clouds. It is the most blessed thing. But if you have to meet Jesus Christ on the earth, then that is the, the most miserable thing. That is the day of uh, lamb. That's the most miserable thing. And he says like this, there are some people, God is not saying that everybody is like that. There are some people who are keeping themselves holy and uh, they are eligible and they are wearing these white robes and they are going to roam or they are going to walk with the Lord. It says like uh, uh, they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. They are worthy. Here also it gives a great hope that in how much uh, 
this any church or anything is like looks spoiled, but God is having his remnant there. In the midst of uh, like serious uh, times, like the King, uh, King Ahab times, Elijah was arguing with God, or he's saying that uh, I'm the only one who's standing for you, Lord. But thank God, the Lord said that I have 7,000 people I have saved for them. I have saved them for me. That's the remnant. Even in this church, there, are, there is a remnant. We praise God for that. And these people are worthy and they are wearing the white robes. So what does it mean by white robes? White robes represent something being uh, forgiven of their sins. Receive the forgiveness. We can remember Isaiah chapter 2, verse 18. 18 and 19. You see? 18, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 18. Verse 18. Yeah. But the eyes of the Lord have the two. No, sorry, one, chapter 1, verse 18. 1, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together. Come now, let us reason together. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, uh -huh. they will be as white as snow. Though your sins are scarlet, they will be as, as white, white as, as snow. snow. Though they are red like crimson, they are they will be like wool. Though they are like uh, red like crimson, but they'll be white. What does it mean by? Our sins will be forgiven. But these people are worthy. They have received the, the garment of salvation. And another great thing about them is they, will, they are going to walk with the Lord wherever he goes. This is the group we can see in the Revelation. Uh, Chapter 14. Chapter 14. Verse 4 and 5. Chapter 14, verse 4 and 5. These are the ones who have not been defiled with women, for they have kept themselves chaste. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These are the people who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These have been first. These are the first fruit of the among men. And among the men, the of the God. first fruit. You to see, that is the great news. Even from the church of Sardis, a church, a church looks like a dead church. Mm -hmm. Even from this, there is a group remnant who are like to be a first fruit. And we can also see chapter seven, Revelation chapter seven. Chapter 7, verse 9. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands. And we can also read the verse 14, 13 and 14. Revelation chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. And, and one of the elders answered, saying to me, These who are clothed in the white robes, who are they? And from where have they come? And I said to him, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are the people who washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made their clothes white. white. This is actually a message to the church that the clothes represent our works. Bible says that our good works are like a rags before the Lord. They're like a dirty, filthy rags before the Lord. And these rags or these clothes should be washed so that it will become white. 
and these lives they are washed in the blood of lambs and they got white clothes many times we see even christian circles people wear white clothes as a symbolic symbolically that uh, they are living or they are like washed their clothes the blood of the lamb that is wonderful but this white is is going to stand forever and uh, this is the poor people in this sadhis who are having this and now the most scariest part we can read here chapter uh, revelation chapter 3 verse 5 he who overcomes shall thus be clothed in white garment and i will not erase his name from the book of life and i will confess his name before my father and before his angels amen here we see that he is saying that i will not wipe out his name from the book, book of, of life. life that means there is a chance that god can wipe out anyone's name from the book of life we also can see from the gospels when the, uh, the disciples were sent to do some ministry and jesus was there they have written back and they were giving the report and saying that they were happy and they said like the lord in your name even the demons are trembling even the evil spirits are trembling jesus said do not be so happy for that just be happy that your names are written in the book of in the book of life because to for the names to for the names to be written in the book of life is that means jesus christ is accepting them it's kind of like a salvation you can say they are like saved people why do we say their names are written in the book of life there are that means there is a book of death also book of death book of life those names written in the book of life and those names written in the book of death and somebody's name can be wiped out from the book of life when they are not watchful when they are not uh, obeying to the word of god what they are what they have heard and when they are living a life which is on their own will there is a danger that that name can be wiped out from the book of life as we see we were uh, uh, meditating or we were discussing about the doctrine one doctrine is like one saved forever saved once somebody is saved forever saved i personally do not uh, so much believe in this doctrine because bible scripture does also says that god cannot be mocked mm-hmm. what you sow that what you reap if somebody sows in flesh he will reap the corruption by this is when somebody sows in the spirit he will reap the life mm-hmm. when somebody sows in the flesh he will reap the corruption when somebody is living as they wanted just because once some years back he has accepted jesus that that is not going to save him in eternity and also here jesus Christ is mentioned that i will i will open up what is it i will confess his name i will confess his name before my father and before, and before his, his angels. angels this also jesus Christ said when he was on earth he says like whoever is not objectionable or whoever is ready to accept his yeah. name before people before humans and uh, he said i will also accept him before my father and before angels it's exactly the thing that uh, jesus christ is saying here that means this remnant group was not shied away or were not stepped back from accepting jesus christ in front of all people they were not shied away from saying that i am a christian i belong to jesus christ they were not shied away of that so as a return jesus christ is saying that i will also confess that i know him jesus christ also said to his people i do not know them do you see at chapter 7 verse 21 not chapter 25 to some certain group of people he said i will not know them 
I do not know them. That's what the response from Jesus said. And here he believes, assuring them that I will confess about them before Father and all the angels that I know them. They are my people. And he takes them in. And uh, this is about the church of Sardis. And we see uh, verse 7 to verse 13 is about Philadelphia church. The church of Philadelphia. Can uh, somebody read chapter 7? Uh, verse 7 to 13. Yeah. Can somebody read that? Revelation chapter 7, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 7 to. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These things say, uh, He that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that open and no man shutter, and shutter and no man open. I know thy works, behold. I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship at my at thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them and that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. And I will write upon him that name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon my write upon him my new name. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Amen. Here we can see the ear the the revelation of Jesus Christ is like the one who is having the key of David and who can open that no one can shut and who can shut that no one can open and he is also revealing that he is a holy one, he is a truthful one and uh, he says, you can see, uh, yeah. he who is holy, that's the revelation. And uh, what we can see is uh, some similarities between Church of Philadelphia and Church of Smyrna. See, Jesus Christ did not mention about any deficiency in these churches. Mm -hmm. Even Church of Smyrna, he didn't say anything. He said like, yeah, I know you are doing good. Yeah, I know that you are doing good. And uh, outwardly you look like a poor fellow, but you are rich. Because you have me, that's why you are rich. There is a persecution that is going to come upon you. Mm -hmm. Stand strong. And he is also encouraging him that the persecution will be only for 10 days. And just hold it and be faithful till the end. That's what the Jesus Christ was, tell was telling to Church, Church of Smyrna. But if you see Church of Philadelphia, he is saying that his mm -hmm. revelation is like the one who is having the key. What does it mean now? What does it, uh, the key represent? The keys are representing authority. The keys are representing authority. And I am having the authority to open or to shut. And that also gives us, the, uh, makes us remember what Jesus Christ was telling to the church. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19 and 20. It says, uh, Simon Barjona, I will build my church upon you. And the, the gates of Hades cannot stand against them. I will give you the key that you can open or whatever that you open on earth, it shall be open in heaven. Whatever that you close on earth, that shall be closed mm -hmm. even in heaven. That's part of authority. 
Jesus Christ was delegating the authority to his church. He's actually delegating the authority. But he's having the master key. And because nobody can open, nobody can shut. shut. Once he opens, nobody can shut. And once he shuts, nobody can open. And he's saying that I'm not the leader. We thank God that uh, this church and uh, do not have a this church does not have any deficiency, and uh, they know that Jesus Christ is holy. Because even to Abraham, it's just like Abraham, Genesis chapter 17, in the first five verses, we can say, Abraham, I am holy, be holy as I am holy. Even Peter was writing that in his epistle. That Jesus, that the Lord has said that be holy as I am holy. This church has kind of a truly hold on to this revelation that they have not defiled themselves, they have kept themselves pure. That's what even John writes in his epistle. Can we turn our books to First uh, John chapter 3, verse 3? Anybody who is having this hope will keep him keep himself pure or holy as he is pure. Why he says that as he is pure, as I am holy, why is like that? Because the standard of holiness is not the societal standard. Is not an individual standard because in a society, for example, uh, in some years back, what is being considered as a big mistake or big sin? Mm -hmm. Now that is not being considered as a big sin nowadays. You see, once upon a time, even like 20, 30 years back, somebody is being an alcoholic is considered to be like a very big thing. But now, the, almost it is a social norm. Every single person is saying, well, that's not a big thing. It's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And you can't call somebody who is who is an alcoholic as a sinner according to the present standard, if you say that. That's the standard now. And maybe the things may can go even worse in the coming future. That's why the standard is not any individual standard. The standard is not any society standard. The standard is not any uh, country or nation standard. Because in some nations, what is being called as a sin is not considered as a sin in another nation. So that's not the standard. The standard is the standard of God. That's why he said, as he is holy, as he is pure, somebody wants to be holy like that. That is according to the word of God. So we praise God that this church is actually has the revelation that, that Jesus is holy. And he says that I know that your works, your strength is very little, but you have received the word and you have patience, my perseverance. Perseverance. What does it mean by perseverance? This is like you are not, you, you have really shown the perseverance. How can, where this perseverance comes? Can we turn our books to Romans chapter 5, verse 4? Chapter 5, verse 4. Romans chapter 5, verse 4. In perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. I can read from third chapter, third verse 2. And not only this, but we also excel in our tribulations. We also excel in, in our tribulations. Knowing that, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. Tribulation brings perseverance. And perseverance, proven character. Perseverance brings proven character. And proven character, hope. Proven character brings hope. This is a kind of a uh, sequential sketch we can say. Tribulation brings perseverance. That means somebody is being persecuted, going through the tribulation, and his fleshly nature was humble, and he was learned to obey to the Lord, and he was learned to be faithful to the Lord, 
and that he is learned not to go astray from the word of the lord that is what actually perseverance mm -hmm. and this perseverance manifests his character his character how somebody remains faithful even in the tribulation how somebody remains lovable or loving even in the midst of the tribulation even in the midst of uh, humiliation how, how somebody can be uh, loving others even in the midst of humiliation mm -hmm. that's where his character is being manifested and this character builds hope because somebody is exhibiting this character and uh, this hope what is that hope that this person or is going to meet Lord one day, that this person is going to stand before the Lord one day, that the, the promises of God are going to work in his life. That's why it says that this hope do not, uh, it will not disappoint us. And uh, the church of Philadelphia was showing this perseverance. That means this church, it went through this flame of fire. This church has went through this flame of fire. And that's why God is saying. And this is an interesting thing. Can you read that uh, in the Revelation chapter 3, verse uh, 11? It says that I'm coming quickly. I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have in order that no one, can, no one take your crown. No one will take your crown. What does it mean? They have already received the crown. Can you turn Revelation chapter 2, verse uh, 10, 10. Yeah, verse 10. And I will give you. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Uh -huh. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you mm -hmm. into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. I will give you the crown of life. To the church of Smyrna, he said, like, if you overcome, if you stand strong, or if you stand faithful in the time of tribulation, I will come and give you the crown of life. And to this church, he said, like, hold fast, or hold fast, and see that nobody will take your crown. Steal your crown. You see, they have a crown. They have received the reward from God already. Mm -hmm. And they know that they have received the reward from God already. And he said that uh, you have to be watchful to preserve, protect this crown, mm -hmm. protect this reward mm -hmm. till the time of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why he's always saying that I have, I have, uh, I fought a good fight and uh, I put, I kept my faith. Now, for me, my crown is waiting. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. I kept my faith. Now my crown is waiting. Because uh, even the church of Philadelphia also, Jesus Christ is saying that uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to come quickly. That's a, a comfort message. Mm -hmm. He's actually comforting them. You went through a lot of tribulation. You went through a lot of tough times. Now, I'm going to come quickly. So, the wait is not very long. Even Philippians chapter, Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice. I say again, rejoice. And it, the verse continues like, For the Lord is near. For the Lord is near. And that is a comforting message to the church. And he says like, there's one interesting thing that he says, he's telling them, I have opened a door before you that nobody can shut it. God has opened a door. That is kind of an invitation. If you open a door, that's kind of an invitation so that they can come inside. They can come into the uh, kingdom of God or can come into the, uh, the palace of God or the temple of God Whatever, that could be a, another opportunity for them. And uh, here it is, inter interesting thing is, there is a uh, mm -hmm. the synagogue of Saturn. They are like a Jews, but they are they're not yeah. Jews. But they have yeah. lied that they are Jews. That means they have lied that they are believers, mm -hmm. but they are not believers. They are, in fact, 
the synagogue of Satan. That means synagogue, why, why Jesus mentioned the synagogue of Satan? Synagogue means the worshippers of Satan. Where the worship is happening? These people, they worship Satan. They are actually the worshippers of Satan. Mm -hmm. But they have crept into the churches. Mm -hmm. And he said that, I will make them fall before your feet. Hallelujah. In English, it is also mentioned that I will bow make down. them bow down and to your feet. At your feet. At your feet. At your feet. Yeah. I will make them to become and bow down at your feet yeah. and to know that I have loved you. Yeah. In another translation, it's also written, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. And for them, God wants to make them know that He has loved them. Mm -hmm. That means what? Even in the uh, Psalms, we see many places the psalmist says that God, they are mocking at us. They are, very, they are asking us, where is your God? Mm -hmm. They are asking us how, how, how long He will take time to protect you. Mm -hmm. Where is your God? They are mocking. Mm -hmm. Even this church might have gone through such a situation that uh, people were asking or were mocking that uh, where is your God? Where is your faith? On what for whom you are waiting, for whom you are looking forward, where, where is he? And he said that by making them fall on your feet, by showing that I have loved you. So here we see love is an action. Love is always an action. That Jesus said, he said that I will do something very great that everybody will know that I have loved you. And uh, even from the Gospel of John, we, we get to know that loving, loving God is obeying to his commands. At the same time, if Jesus loves us, he's going to do a spectacle for like it. As we John 2.16, God so loved the world that he has given his only begotten son. That's an action. Love is an action. So, and uh, we can also refer to Psalms 46 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. He said, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will exalt my name among the heathen. How, how would he exalt his name among the heathen? That he is going to do something very spectacular. That they, they have to. Obey. They have to agree that he is the true God. They have to agree that this is the work of God. That something very, very big, very, very special. This is something which, that nobody can deny it. They can't just can't say that it is a fluke or it just can happen naturally. It's going to be like that. So Jesus Christ is also telling them that I will make them know that I have loved you. I, the thing that I'm going to do with you is something very great. Even in the book of Habakkuk also, it's mentioned that the thing that I'm going to do is very great. Even if some, if you, even if somebody, uh, if you tell to someone, they will not be able to believe it. So that's what he's going to do. And uh, the synagogue of Saturn, he said, I will humble them. I will crush them that they will come and all of your feet. Here, God wants the church to stand strong. It's not about the person. It is about the body of Christ. It also says that under your feet, I will make the enemy. I will crush the enemy. It is the promise Jesus Christ was speaking to the church. It's like Under your feet, very soon, I will make the enemy yeah, trampled or crushed or stamped. So that's what uh, he's also uh, telling this church. And uh, he's saying that there's a promise. There is a, yeah, there is a great tribulation that is going to come upon the world, but I will protect you. This is a real great promise to this church. Those who are 
going up, standing faithful in a small, small tribulation, those who are standing and are holding on to God, even a small thing, is a big promise from God is that in a bigger tribulation, in a bigger persecution time, I will protect you. Because even in the end days, Jesus Christ said that there will be a great fall. The scripture says there will be a great fall. As many people are coming, it's like that many people will be coming into the Lord and many people are drifting away from the presence of the Lord. Drifting from the Lord. In this great fall, in this great uh, critical times, he said that I will stand with you. I will protect you. And another important thing he says that yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. overcomer he who, be, overcomes, yeah. he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he will not go out from it anymore or and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. Yes. Here we see those who overcome, Jesus Christ is going to make them like a pillar in the temple. The pillar also represents very key person. It's a belief of key person. Or can be dependable. Pillar is somebody on whom we can depend or can be trusted. Can be trusted. And we say like that. He will be in my presence all the time. Zechariah was, he was uh, in my vision, he was looking at the two people. He said, like, they are the people who always be in the presence of God. So those who overcome, he's saying that uh, they will be in my presence all the time. They will be in my presence all the time. And also, you can see, uh, I will write my God name and the name, of, and the the name of the city and a new name. We have we have seen in the previous uh, uh, studies that the new name gives represents a new identity. It, it symbolically represents a new identity and a new city. The name of your new city. Is the new address where he is going to reside, where he is going to dwell. Like how Jesus said to the thief that today, assuredly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Like that. So they are giving the assurance, the overcomers, that you will be in Zion, you will be in New Jerusalem, you will be in New Government. New Jerusalem represents the new city of God. And the new government and where Jesus Christ is going to rule is going to rule as a new government. He's saying that uh, that would be your new, new address. And uh, on them I will write the name of my father. That's what, that's what he belongs to. When the Levites were uh, when God chose the Levites, they used to have a, a small uh, uh, you can say plate uh, on their uh, forehead. forehead that was written belongs to the Lord or consecrated to the Lord. That's what they used to have. It's the same thing. He's going to this person belongs to God or this is the care of God. He's saying that. That's the uh, blessing for an overcomer. Jesus Christ is mentioning. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we see. God is uh, always have a word to these churches and he is encouraging that uh, to the overcomers, to the overcomers, he wants to give. And uh, is it only for Philadelphia? Is it only for Smyrna? Is it only for Ephesus? No. It is for every overcomer. Mm -hmm. And different uh, dip the People, those who overcome different situations, they have a different reward. Mm -hmm. Like uh, how we see, maybe we can see like uh, 
दोज टू विन ए बॉक्सिंग मैच द टाइटल इज डिफरेंट and those who won in an athletic or a 400 relay uh this thing he also a, is a winner there is also is a winner but the rewards are different like that those who are overcoming in these situations different situations as they are going the rewards what they are receiving also a different somebody who is standing strong for the lord and uh, and even in its of tribulation mm-hmm. is going to receive the crown somebody who is keeping himself pure away from the false teachings and all mm-hmm. he say that i will give him a new stone white stone on it and new mm-hmm. identity new name is written or somebody who say that who already went through the tribulation and uh, who persevered and who is so strong to receive the reward he say that uh, you are more trustable person mm-hmm. you are going to be in my presence mm-hmm. all the time forever and ever you will be in the temple like a pillar a trustable or dependable or kind of a glorious person for the sake of the glory as paul was saying that i i was i am bearing the marks of christ he says i am i am bearing the marks of christ the suddenly is not about the miracles is not certainly not uh, uh, referring to the miracles or the one, wonders that uh, that were happened in his ministry that he was referring to the wounds that he has suffered for Christ's sake he is referring to the sufferings that he suffered for the Christ's sake those sufferings actually or the glorious things when 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 somebody is glorified these are the things that uh, bring glory for him so that's why these pillars are for the uh, name for the glory sake too so god is speaking to all the churches and we also have another church the church of laodicea church of laodicea you can uh, he mentioned that uh, this church is outwardly it is looking very rich church they have everything but what is missing is that they are a church they don't have Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is outside the church if you see uh, Revelation chapter 3 verse 9 he is knocking the door that means he is outside the church he is not even inside the church he is knocking the door whoever opens I will come inside and I will dine with you and he says like you can be hot or cold but you will be lukewarm i would like to stick it you out of my mouth that means either somebody be in the world or somebody be in the god this hypocrisy was the first thing that the when holy spirit god has come into the church was the first sin that was condemned was judged was hypocrisy you can see acts chapter 5 ananias and so sapphira says and even jesus christ has admonished charities many times for their hypocrisy that they are hypocrites that's what jesus said like, either you be like this or you be like that but just don't be a hypocrite and uh, you can see church of laodicea in the coming weeks how god wants them to when they repent what they should do when this church when we see church of sardis when they repent they have to do the works they have to obey to the word of god what they have listened when ephesus church of ephesus was asked to repent they supposed to do the works what they have done in the early stages the with the love how they have loved god and how they have done anything is that uh, love that's mm-hmm. what you is i asking that you do the things this how you have done in the beginning in church of kaichira we think that we just get rid of all these things all the defiling or evil things. so immorality and uh, 
May God bless this word and make it fruitful in our hearts and bring it a hundredfold fruit. And uh, we thank God for this time. We thank God that uh, He is able to always as a as a plan for every individual. As a plan, we praise God. For thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining. And uh, may I request Pastor Rhoda, can you pray the uh, final prayer? Yes. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Please. I can. Okay. Let us pray. Our dear loving Father, we thank you, we bless you, we worship you, we honor you, that you can allow us to interrogate your word. You can allow us, my Father, to have an opportunity even to, to learn of you, my Father, as even revealed to us by John in the book of Revelations, my Father. We know that uh, it is your spirit that reveals the mysteries of your word unto us, O oh God. May you be exalted, my Father, this evening that you are teaching us and you are continuing teaching us concerning your word. We pray for your servant, O oh God, even Pastor Ruth, my Father, that continue to, re to reveal yourself unto him, my Father, through your word, O oh God. Reveal your, let your spirit, my Father, help him, my Father, to interrogate and even dissect the word spiritually, my Father so that each and every one of us, my Father, starting from the simple believer, even to a believer that has known you for a long time, that we shall be able to understand uh, the book of Revelation. Father, we bless you, we worship you, even as we thank you for all of us that have been able to attend. We pray, my Father, Lord, that you shall bless us. And even th those who are not able to attend today, that even next week, my Father, you give them time to be able to attend. Father, tonight we worship you, we honor you, and we glorify your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Thank Lord. you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Rhoda. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jias, thank you. Thank you, Brother yes. Michael. Thank yes. You, brother yes, Brother. Thank you so much. Uh, you. I want to know about your wife. Yeah, she's she now is better? Good. Yeah, she's now better and uh, she has participated. Okay. She's reading the okay. words. Yeah, thank you for yeah. your prayers. Okay. Yeah. We, are, are we are praying for our Yes, Pastor. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you for your faith. And now Welcome. Good. Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise Yes. Yes, sister. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you so much for praying. Yes. For my help. Thank you. Thank you, each and everyone. Okay, bro brother Michael. Amen. Is coming. Amen. Is give me your information. Everything. I talk to it. Him. Yes. Thank you, Thomas. I'm yes, happy now. Go yes, yes. I see now. Yes. I'm very happy. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ma Ruth, we can now uh, stop recording and also the meeting. Praise Lord, brother. Praise Lord, brother. Praise Lord. How are you?
చాలా రోజుల తర్వాత రికార్డింగ్ స్టార్ట్ చేయాలి కదా అంతే కదా నేపాల్లో <laughs> ప్లాన్ చేసుకుంటున్నాం రియలీ ఇట్ వాజ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ బ్లెస్సింగ్ బ్రదర్ యువర్ బుక్ అది ప్రాక్టీసింగ్ ద ప్రెసెన్స్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ తెలుగు మై అండ్ రూట్స్ మదర్ ఈస్ రీడింగ్ ఇట్ ఎస్ యు ఆర్ షేరింగ్ ద ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ షేరింగ్ ద టెస్టిమని చెప్తా ఉంటుంది సో మనం చెప్పుకుంది చదివారు అని చెప్పి మొన్ననే చాలా దేనికి చాలా మేము అందరం కలిసి స్పిచ్ చెల్లించాం ఎంకరేజ్ చేయబడ్డాం దాని వల్ల కూడా ఆ సాక్ష్యం వల్ల కూడా అట్లానే ఇంకొక ప్రజెంట్ దేవుని చుట్టూ మాత్రం త్వరలో ఒక టూ బుక్స్ ఉన్నాయి ఏస్ మాత్రమే ఎందుకు అని కంప్లీట్ అయినవి ఏస్ మాత్రమే ఎందుకు అది అందులో స్థితులు సో ఇవి ఇక్కడ నేపాలీలో ట్రాన్స్లేట్ చేసుకున్నాం అయిపోయింది ఒక ఐదు వందల స్థితులు అయితే నేపాలీలో ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ అయిపోయింది ఏస్ మాత్రమే ఎందుకు అవ్వాలి దేవన్ కృపలో బైబిల్ పై నుంచి జరుగుతున్నాయి లిటరేచర్ మినిస్ట్రీ జరుగుతుంది చర్చ్ మినిస్ట్రీ జరుగుతుంది ఇట్లా దేవన్ అర్పిస్తాను ఎప్పుడు వస్తున్నారు ఇండియా మీరు ఎలా ఇండియా చూడాలి కిరణ్ అన్న వాళ్ళు కొత్తగా ఉంటున్నారు తెలుసా మీకు మరి Thank you so much.